Tonight, the Integrity Octane Series takes on one of America's shortest tracks and one of its most iconic bull rings. This is the virtual Bristol Motor Speedway. 200 laps are on the table and qualifying has just begun for tonight's race in Tennessee. The Octane Series having a fantastic start to the 2024 season with returning veterans going up against some of the brand new rookies in this field and fantastic racing giving each and every week. Last time we went racing, we saw Michael Laria come through with his very first victory and now a chance to see if someone else can go for the checkered flag or if it'll be maybe a potential back-to-back -back streak for the number 44. Welcome back to Bristol. As it stands, drivers are all on the track. Ethan Lane has the provisional pole position. I'm David Kreutz, your commentator and producer for tonight's event. And with qualifying on the move, it looks like 19 drivers have taken the time. Over 30 have registered and there's still more coming into the Session. Matt John is going to be on track, also going to be the number 14 machine of Sam Nieto, and he's there in 15th. Sean Kalis is going to be in the 15th spot as he jumps right up in front of Sam. Michael Laria in the number 44, going to be going up top for his first qualifying lap. Michael, one of the drivers who's got the opportunity to maybe go for another victory, as you'll see that number 44 taken to the track. Maybe a chance to go for two for two, and already the rookie campaign for Larry, a very strong third in qualifying right now. Braxton DeWeese jumps up into second at the line, looking to gain 83 thousandths of a second. It looks like for Braxton, he's not going to get enough to get the pole. Still going to be second as it stands. Not at all a bad way to start the race if, of course, that's where he stays. As it stands, we have a total now of 2 minutes and 40 seconds left on the timing charts. 27 drivers have taken a time out of the 32 that are registered. We are only waiting right now for Trevor Trago, who's going to take his first lap this time by. Brian Perry, Stephen Wetton, Nicholas Ward, and Randy Fyash. Everyone from Ethan Lane down to Jim Fife in 27th has taken one complete lap. And it looks like Trago going to have a little bit of trouble in his second. And it looks like that's going to be his qualifying run. Trago going to limp to the line. And it's going to be the checkered flag out for the 37's run. And that's going to be all for the Juan Adun Chevrolet. As it looks like Trevor Trago, the only driver on the circuit besides Matt Jonas. So two drivers right now who are getting extra practice laps in. They're not taking any extra time. So they're going to continue running for a few more laps. Nicholas Ward now on the way. That's the number 97. He's gotten down a pit road and he could be next up with the drivers to take a time. Ward gets onto the track. Jim Fife also still going to be on pit road. And for Ward, he just disconnected from the session and reconnected. So he's going to come in late, but it's better to get a time now than never. Now it's going to be Nicholas Ward on the way. 27 drivers have taken the time before him. But Ward, last season, when this was the regular season finale, he had to win this race to come through and fight for the championship. Wasn't able to do so. However, he led the middle stage of this race dominantly and had top five speed until about the last 20 laps. But it got a little more chaotic and wasn't able to get much out of the night, although Nicholas Ward definitely knows what it takes to be quick here. I'd suggest watching out for the 97 as his first lap concludes. That's going to move him into a tie for 26th. Looking for a lot more on this lap. Building up that speed. He's about six tenths of a second away. Going way high to get through the front straightaway and at the line for Ward. It's going to be a jump up from 26th to 15th. So going to be in the middle of the pack as Ward looks to be the final driver to take a lap. And Nicholas now going to drop down and in the number 97, limping around one final time for Ward. His qualifying run is over, and 28 drivers have taken a time at the top of the board. Ethan Lane, who never got to compete in this series past the halfway point last season, he's back, and now is an opportunity maybe to go for the win. It's Ethan Lane and Braxton Deweese, your front row in Bristol. How about we get to know the 32 drivers who can make up the starting field tonight if of course they all take the green 28 drivers take a time two others attempted two drivers did not 
take to the track. With that being said, your qualifying lineup has been set. Let's find out who lines up front in the field and who ends up all the way in the back. From top to bottom, let's start up top. It's going to be Ethan Lane with the pole position, a 14.079, and only a few thousands of a second away from breaking into the 13 second realm, which will be by far the fastest lap, but still a very quick time as it's Braxton Deweese in second, about a half a second back with a 14.161. Then from there, Michael Larry is going to be in third with a 14.168, and one thousandth of a second behind for the fourth position. It's Jacob Fife, our defending race winner, going to beat Fife out. They're still both on the second row. Cody Smith going to be in the fifth spot, and Kyle Cooper in sixth. With Nick Tarbuck then in 7th, Don Stevenson 8th, Matthew Thunors is in ninth, and Brian McFerrin rounding out the top 10. 11th is going to be Alan Rawell, and Cody Griffin is in 12th with Galen Gibbon 13th, Neil Froelich 14th, and Nicholas Ward position number 15. Gap from your pole sitter to 15th is about 2 and a half tenths, and it'll be Justin Morton then in the 16th spot in that number 11. Ross Cato is going to be in the 17th position, 14.337 Ross and Matt Jonas is going to be 18th spot with Jared Callen 19th and Sean Kalist rounding out the top 20. It's 21st Bobby Terrell and then it's going to be Sam Nieto in 22nd, John Cars 23rd and Eric McFarland 24th. John Steele going to be position number 25 with a 14602 and then it's going to be Ryan Farrell 26th, Chris Schetzler is going to be in 27th and Jim Fife is the final driver to take a time with a 15.483 Fife there with the number 63 machine 28th and the final driver to take a time just ahead of Trevor Trago's number 37 Stephen Wetton's number 10 lines up in 30th tonight and the final two drivers on your starting grid it's going to be Randy Fyash in the number 55 who lines up in 31st and Brian Petry is the final driver overall outside of row 16 32nd and last to round off the starting grid here in Bristol. Looks like right now we've seen over 10 times taken on the track. It's a total of now 11 drivers that have taken at least one lap around the circuit in second practice and drivers are still warming up. It's going to be Sam Nieto at the top of the board for warm-ups as it stands. Sean Kalis is going to be running in second and Eric McFarland is in now the second spot. He jumps right up ahead on Sean Kalis. And we're watching the weather right now. It looks like it's about 7 o'clock at night for these drivers, which means that this is going to end up a night race as it all goes on. Afternoon conditions in practice. We can already see the sun is beginning to set in the backdrop of the Bristol Motor Speedway, so expect conditions to continue changing. And we're going to see them much more like what we saw shall we say, going back much earlier in the campaign. It was last year at Bristol. We've seen many night races before, but it's going to be a chance for Bristol to head to the dark side before all is said and done. Minute and 37 remaining, and the sun is still setting here. Ross Cato now going to be 13th, Ryan Farrell 14th, and Jim Fife 15th. Unfortunately, your defending winner at this track is not here. And Tom Wetmore will not be racing the way things are looking. However, Wetmore was the driver who won last season for what is currently his final Octane Series victory. Of course, we're expecting Wetmore to get at least one or two as the season progresses. But tonight, doesn't look like he's going to be there again to defend the race victory he collected at the last great Coliseum a season ago. Take a ride on board now with Neil Froelich, the fastest driver in our practice session, and see what it's like just inside the cockpit. Neil Froelich as it stands going to be running through. You'll see the driver, the number 17. Froelich with us as it stands as the overall race leader. Sam Nieto going to be second and Eric McFarland there in third. Sean Kalis fourth and around out the top five, Kyle Cooper. Well, Nancy Wetmore in the chat room and we're running through the numbers once again. We don't see Tom Wetmore on the registration list. So with that being said, we don't see the 51 at all. Hopefully an opportunity comes through, but we're 
five seconds away from getting to our main event here. Don't think there's a chance unless we're reading everything wrong. Tom Wetmore does not appear on our registration list. The regular all throughout last season in this one. However, we don't see him as we speak. With that being said, qualifying has concluded and it's going to be at the top of the board. Ethan Lane, same goes as he looks to be fastest here. Maybe a chance for win number two for his season. Rockingham, we saw him last time by. It was Ethan Lane who had a very good chance to get the victory. Had a lot of speed, but the big problem for him was just wasn't able to get away from his own mistakes. For Lane, we saw him dominant in 2023, but last week wasn't really the same case. Had speed, but kept making the same mistakes over and over again. Had a lot of trouble keeping it in the wall and such. Of course, multiple times over, we saw that, and it ended up being the rookie in the number 44 who got things done, and it's going to be Michael Laria starting right behind Lane. I think we're looking at already some early juggernauts in the championship race. Braxton Nuis as well. He's one of the drivers doing the double, as he's going to be in the Monday night tour and the Tuesday night tour at the same time. We see him both days of the week here in integrity and right now Braxton going to be up top as it looks like everyone is already on the starting grid the iRacing official pace car will get through get out of neutral grab a gear and will be moving for the first time tonight Lane going to be up to the top side of course when he gets on the track Braxton Deweese going to take it even higher now time for our first pace laps of the day Now, if you look above Bristol Motor Speedway, you can't really tell all too much about what's going on with the track conditions and such. However, we'll try to get to a little bit of a better angle of what exactly is happening as right now, conditions are continuing to change. For the start-finish line, drivers are going to come through and you'll see the stadium lights more and more apparent with shadows cast all around the track. Ethan Lane going to be up in front and he's got a very, very mild track to deal with. Air temperature of 66 degrees Fahrenheit 68 degrees that's the track temperature so we got conditions that really shouldn't be much a worry for the drivers however this gen 4 package these stock cars they are never easy a lot of high horsepower action at the short track we've seen it before giving way to chaotic racing moments and for Ethan Lane and Braxton Deweese alike they're up in front here Maybe an opportunity to break away quickly if strategy goes the right way. Pit stop strategy, you got to look out for that as well. We've seen a lot of different styles of races recently. Long green flag runs, short stints broken up repeatedly, overtime finishes. Tonight at Bristol, if possible, I think we're going to see a two-stop strategy under green. Most likely going to come down to three or four if we have consistent yellow flags. So expect either the 50 odd strategy where every 50 laps drivers are coming through or we're going to see drivers maybe go a little bit longer for 60 to 70 laps a piece to try to get to the very end 200 laps tonight and of course opportunity for maybe a little more with those extra laps could be overtime bristol the last great coliseum no stranger to risky racing and 32 drivers take to the field, all of which we see from top to bottom. We'd like to thank once again Nancy Wetmore, Doug Middendorf, Alan's Art Images, and Chris Deweese for stopping by as we are set to get into the racing here in Bristol. Pace car got down and low quick. Ethan Lane going to grab a gear and get things going. We are green for the Bristol Motor Speedway. Lane at the line, going to lead the opening two laps of this race, and we are off quick. It's going to be Braxton Deweese right behind him, Michael Laria going to be there with, and Jacob Fife right now going to be running fourth, looking for that breakout race in regards to getting the consistent good results up. For Fife, not a great race last night in the Integrity Ignite Series, struggled starting in 35th, and although he made his way up in the top 25, wasn't really the night he was looking for, even with some big gains, all things considered. You're seeing 
single file for the most part. Now Matthew Thunor is going to be running with Gallon Gibbon and Cody Gritman as well. Even Alan Rawwell up in the mix. And it looks like now Rawwell going to go way high, almost making some contact. Nicholas Ward head to bottom side and Matt Jonas is going to go right there with. Matt going to stay right behind the 97 of Ward here and take it to the bottom side. And looks like Allen going to be alone up top. And not good for Rawwell who's running in 15th and not at all having a bad race so far but losing a little bit early. We'll see whether or not he can pull it back together starting in 11th and currently 15th spot on the board. No big movers up in front. 13th to 10th is Galen Gidman. Maybe going to try to get up into the single digits. You see him there all the way up high and he's going to get a nice run. Not enough to pass Don Stevenson necessarily but he does have some speed up top and it looks like he's going to use it to his advantage and as such, Gallen Gidman fighting high. We'll see if he can get a little bit more out of it as the race progresses. Brian McFerrin in the 07 Under Armour machine is in 8th right now. And Nick Tarbuck is just ahead. As it stands, though, looks like no troubles for the up-and-front guys as they're caution out already. Leaders get away. Neil Froelich and many others. Looks like Alan Rawwell, Justin Morton all going to be involved. Caution is out there. Sam Nieto getting a little bit of contact. No, he just barely avoids it. And as such, we are are under caution. Rawell and Neil Frolick immediately involved. Let's take a look back and find out what caused it here as we are looking at our first incident of the night. Going to set ourselves up with a little bit of that contact. We of course, brought us to that caution and some context to go with it. One lap down, Alan Rawwell going to be finding himself off the leading pace. Nicholas Ward makes contact then with a 17 of Froelich. It's a chain reaction. Ward gets damaged, so does Rawwell. Alan parts it. And it looks like it's going to be Morton who makes contact there. Given the fact that Bristol is such a short track, it's tricky to immediately lay blame there on one factor or the other. So we're going to check on board with Justin Morton, give an extra angle and show a little bit more context into what just happened there. Is Morton, no room to avoid maybe. Couldn't go high, couldn't go low. Here's a look on board one more time and you'll watch as the battle and the caution develops right before Justin's eyes. And no, nothing that could be done there. He tried to avoid Ward, couldn't really flick it back quick enough to get out of the way for Rawell. And that's a minefield. You can't avoid them all as a driver usually. And that's unfortunately going to hamper the night for the number 11. Morton in trouble quick. And he's going to fade back down to pit road as many others go through. The leaders opt to stay out. And we are once again pacing this time. And for the first time, we are under yellow with Ethan Lane, your race leader. With Lane up in front, Michael Laria going to be in second. Third spot is now going to be fourth. Of course, Jacob Fine, Braxton Deweese, they're both running together. Kyle Cooper rounds out in the top five. Early going, and it looks like we are set to go. One lap to green next time. By we're 13 laps in at a 200 already. I'm going to be coming back at about the lap 15 marker, maybe the end of 15 when all is said and done. So Going through this time by lane up ahead, Michael Larry are going to be in second and Braxton Deweese there in third. Let's take a look through the entirety of the top ten and find out what's going on. Jacob Fife going to be fourth and it'll be Kyle Cooper in fifth. It's going to be sixth and Cody Smith, Nick Tarbuck in seventh and then Brian McFerrin eighth with Galen Gidman then in ninth and Don Stevenson rounding out the top ten. Just like that, it's going to be your top ten and for the majority of which they came from the qualifying grid. Galen Gidman, the only driver who's made big moves up 13th to 9th as it stands and that's going to be, tentatively speaking your biggest mover on the circuit we'll find out more about who can climb up through the field. However, right now I think it's going to be all in the hands of the 54 once more. Let's watch out as it's going to be Ethan Lane who brings us back in and hopes to go to the green flag with the lead. Michael Laria right there with Braxton DeWeese and Jacob Fife together again. And it's going to be time for Lane to let loose in the Dodge Mopar as the green flag flies for our first restart of the night. Pace cars down and in. We're back on the way. Green flag's out, and it's going to be led by Lane.
Lane going to be able to get that run, take the race lead once again. Michael Larry are going to stay in second, and Braxton DeWeese now holds his own there in third. Look for the back, and you'll see Bobby Terrell, Galen Gidman. In addition, you see Don Stevenson, and it looks like he's going to send it into the wall just a bit. Minor contact, but tonight... That might not be the be-all, end-all. Not going to be good in the slightest to have that contact consistently, but as it stands, for these drivers, it's always going to be about the consistency in, of course, keeping it out of the wall. With that being said, once again, you can make some of that contact a little bit less of a more important factor, shall we say, with pit road. We're going to see a lot of drivers coming in repeatedly if, of course, we have these drivers persistently having cautions, and cautions do breed cautions. Maybe as the race goes on, we'll see more of which. Right now, though, if we don't get cautions, there's also the factor of Bristol being a short track to begin with, and right now, for Matt Giles, while he's beaten on the number 15, he's only losing a spot or two. What really is costing him here is that merger back on where he's getting loose, and you can see it. Every time a driver makes contact with the wall, they're getting a little bit of that slam in and slam out. And when they go out, they're going to push themselves out forcefully and take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, which you do not want to do repeatedly. And that's the real trouble right now for a driver like John Us. He fades back into 14th. He started in 18th, so by no means a bad effort so far. It looks like for Matt, not going to gain any longer the way things are looking. Up in front, Brian McFerrin goes way down to the bottom side on Galen Gidman. And Galen going to stay right up high. The number nine machine running down through the front straightaway. And now on the high side, he'll bring Cody Griffin right there with him. And Bobby Terrell in the mix as well. Cautions out again. Yellow flag will fly with Chris Schetzler involved. Let's find out what happened here. Schetzler looks to be the only driver besides Alan Rawell to lose a lot of time fast. So we'll find out whether or not it was anything more than a single car spin or two. Here it is. Here's a look at the previous incident. It's going to be Chris Schetzler and Stephen Wetton potentially involved. Wetton gets away from the number 24, so that's not going to be the case. Schetzler a little bit loose going through three and four. And then Matthew Thunder is going to finish him off there. Contact and sent down. Schetzler going to end up 360 and fast. And he gets back all the way. Nevertheless, caution is out. We are under yellow for the second time tonight. It's going to be a very fast move down a pit road for a few drivers. Notably, we've seen Jared Callen, Trevor Trago, Randy Fyash, Jim Fife, Morton and Rawell go down at least one salt. Ready? Ethan Lane and company up in front ought to stay out on the track. And Michael Larry are going to be second there still. Braxton DeWeese in third. Leaders are going to choose to stay out. Looks like for Chris Schetzler, he's also going to opt to stay out for the time being. No major damage there. Just going to be a fast 360, and the caution will fly. Ethan Lane up in front right now, looking at strategy, trying to figure out who's going in. Most of your leaders, as we mentioned, choose not to. Matthew Thunors, though, is making the move. Same goes for Jared Cowan. A bit of silence on the circuit is once again drivers going to be pacing for the second time tonight. Nighttime Sky is almost entirely in effect. You'll see right now Lane is going to be leading the way as conditions continue to change and from his perspective, although you really don't see much of the sky, it's getting darker and darker. Eventually going to be pitch black here and it looks like as we look right beyond the grandstands, that it is. So Ethan Lane, going to give you that first-hand perspective of what it's like to face the changing conditions here in Bristol. However, when you're going through these heavily banked corners with more than 25 degrees pushing against you every turn, you don't really pay much attention to what's going on with the sky. You're paying a lot more attention to what's on the track here. So for Lane, I'd be surprised if he's been paying much notice to it. You'll see the sky a little bit more of a navy blue as they come out of the back straight straight away, but it's going to be pitch black as they come through the front, and that's going to be a sign that changing conditions are still in play. Weather release is supposed to change, it's going to be overcast skies as it stands for the next two or three hours, which should be enough to get this race in. We have two hours and 25 minutes on our timer here for the session, so no matter what happens... That's the time allotted. Going to be overcast with 66 degrees Fahrenheit and the southeast bound winds at 3 miles an hour. So weather, once again, not much a factor, but we do want to discuss it here. Nobody 
goes down to pit road in the top 25. Matthew Zunhorst, Randy Fyash, Justin Morton, Jim Fife, and Alan Rawell alongside Jared Callen. Those are the drivers who made it into pit road this time by. And they are now on the youngest set of Goodyear rubber by a long margin, two laps of age, relative to 28 for the drivers who stay up in front. Green flag going to fly again with Ethan Lane up and ahead. It's going to be that number 54 taking the lead once more with Michael Laria. Green flag flies. Laria up high and Ethan Lane gets the jump. Side by side, 54 still bottom side through the first two turns. Lane going to be side-by-side. Side. Larry putting down the most pressure. He's gotten there all night long, squeezing up high. Side-by-side side for lead. Same goes. Further on, back in third. Position number four is going to be Braxton Deweese now as Fife gets inside the podium. Ethan Lane, Michael Larry side-by-side side as they come across the stripe again. Although it looks like now Michael lunging deeper to the corner, using the high side with extra momentum, takes the race lead. The 44 out in front. Ethan Lane now going to find himself playing catch up in second. Number 44 machine going to get crossed over fast and as such another quick move and it's going to be Ethan Lane on the low side here relative to Michael and you can see them now side by side with one another. No view of Ethan Lane for the rear view cameras here. It's all about looking at what is up in front. Ethan Lane keeps himself on the bottom leading that low groove but not leading the overall race. It looks like now Lane going to have to play a bit of catch up. You'll see on board exactly what it's like now for Ethan as he's going to stay right behind your new race leader. Ethan Lane right now, just about a car length ahead, if not less than that. And the front runner still going to be first and second here all the while. Jacob Fife and Braxton Deweese, they've separated themselves. Not going to be good for Deweese, but he still is there firmly in fourth. Cody Griffin, Galen Gidman, and Kyle Cooper all coming around. And you'll see Griffin going right down to the bottom side. He's going to have himself low as he tries to defend on Gidman and Kyle Cooper alike. Galen going to go up to the top side, and the RSV. P9 machine going to get up high, try to get that momentum to rip the top, and that might be the difference right now as to getting back up to Cody Griffin. All the while, Ethan Lane is going to go down to the bottom side. He looks low once again, lunges deep, and now going to try again. There goes the 54, setting it further and further, corner after corner. Gets the race lead right back. There goes Ethan Lane. He's got the top spot. And now Michael Larry, you're going to have to fade back a little bit more. Two tenths of a second the gap is, so about a car length in between them. And they're coming up on lap traffic. Take a look just ahead. There's Alan Rawell. He's going to be right there. Just ahead of him is going to be Justin Morton. Morton going to be passed by Rawell. And as such, the number 11 going to be in jeopardy of going one lap down. Not at all Justin Morton's night. A driver who so far on a very, very early tenure for him. It's first time racing in the Octane Series. He's a winner in the Ignite series, but not having a lot of fun tonight. It seems like that number 11 all out of control. And he is slowing it down. Might be parking to the way things are looking. And he's going to be dropping down and in with right side damage. It is major, and he's already going to be put one down as it stands. Ethan Lane leads the way that time through, and it's going to be 44 laps in out of 200. It is the way it stays. Maybe expect to see a longer pit stop strategy as opposed to something quick. Sean Kalist side by side now with Ross Cato and Eric McFarlane. McFarlane going to be right up top. There goes the number 30. 
and he'll get the run. Sean Kalis now going to move down into 17th. And there could be a two for one with Ryan Farrell coming through. Ryan going to stay right on the high side, get through and pull the run off nicely, only to drop down and make a quick block. And you can see some drivers who we don't often find very far back in the pack. And a little bit of trouble it might be for Neil Froelich. He ends up backwards. The yellow flag is out. Caution will fly. We saw it brewing with Ward, Wetton, and Froelich. Caution is out. And this is why Neil Froelich involved for the second time tonight. Here's an instant replay. And it looks like Fro looking to be involved in what was a three-wide battle. Ward and Wetton both getting right up to him, and this is where it all goes down. It's going to be the number 17 of Wetton staying middle three. If, of course, he gets swallowed up, and you see it there, he ends up in the middle of the three drivers, and as they come through out of the corner, it's Chris Schetzler who ends up making the contact and sends Fro look down. It's a big hit. Twice over, front and back, respectively, and the 17 huge caught up there and as such yellow flag is out again this time of course Froelich going to be involved but hit by Chris Schetzler pit road gets busy so at about lap 50 this could be a three strop strategy game if it stays exactly as it is this will be the first of three if they split it into about 50s as the front runners come through you'll see Morton going to be on pit road alone all the while your leaders are coming in you can see there Eric McFarland coming by Ryan Farrell and now Sam Nieto going to cross through with Sean Kalist. And you can see that slight move down below Kalist trying to get away. This is where it all comes down to. We have two pit roads here on Bristol's double pit road circuit configured for over 30 drivers. So we are going to be looking at two angles at once. So going to be a little bit trickier to figure everything out. But Lane and company here, they are the drivers to really look out for. Coming out of there, you can see Cody Griffin on the move. Does Lane get the jump? That he does. It'll be Lane, then Laria, then Griffin, then Braxton DeWeese, Galen Gidman, Kyle Cooper, Bobby Terrell, Brian McFerrin. Nick Tarbuck is going to be 11th to Brian McFerrin's 10th. As such, you'll see more and more drivers from the second pit road making their way out. And it's now going to be Jared Callen, your overall race leader. Jared going to be the man out in the front of the field here. However, that's going to be tentatively speaking. You see him already down low. Ethan Lane up in front, 50 laps in out of 100. And he's got a very good opportunity now to, of course, extend the lead if we stay under green. We saw the long run pace, maybe a little bit better here for Ethan Lane than Michael Laria. we got to talk about tires tonight. I, I think for every driver, they all know, at least in some semblance, what happened this weekend at the Bristol Motor Speedway and the tire dilemma, which all came down to the Goodyear rubber getting shredded after just 50 laps. We saw some imagery of tires that look to be shredded to their inner lining which is the so to speak tire within a tire used in case of emergencies yeah we saw shreds going that deep in for Goodyear rubber that was used on normal green flag runs now Bristol the surface is aged up however of course not going to be the concrete style that many knew and loved of course, different conditions in the weather that I think play the more important factor. Spring Bristol, not going to be dirt Bristol any longer. Back to the pavement, and some tires got fried all throughout last week's event. Now, it came down to Denny Hamlin getting that checkered flag. Tire strategy, a big deal at Bristol, of course, to look out for in the real world. It might not be as extreme here, but if you're good with the long runs when it becomes more challenging... It's a huge advantage, and I think for Ethan Lane, he knows that too. Down and in, there goes the iRacing official pace car. Green flag is going to fly again. Back on her way, Lane gets the job. Ethan Lane makes the move out in front. There's going to be battles all behind. Galen Gidman, Braxton DeWeese, Jacob Fife, Cody Griffin all together now. And they're going to be double file. Multiple lanes through. Cody Griffin, the man who actually breaks away just a bit. But if you look on board with someone getting in the mix, how about Kyle Cooper? Cooper going to be back in the all-white number 73 rather than the all-black number 73. Bobby Terrell's white machine just behind. is going to be the opposites of colors tonight. Running inside the top 10 while Kyle Cooper, no 
sponsor, I suppose, to the rock paint scheme he had on last week. Running very well, and it looks to be his standout performance so far, fighting to get inside of the top five. Let's take a look on board this time through with the number 13 of Braxton Weeks and see exactly what's going on as the number 13 looks to get inside the fight here to get back up into the podium. And you can see now Braxton Uis losing a little bit of time. It's going to be Matt Janas coming through. There's the number 15. That's going to be the pass for ninth. Braxton set back into position number 10. A few laps on board with Braxton. And you're seeing right now drivers getting a little more versatile with the lines they're choosing. Galen Gidman is going to be a prime example as he's looking to take it high now on Jacob Fife. Going up top in that number nine machine. Gidman stays high. Going to keep it there on Jacob Fife. But as it stands. I think there's going to be an opportunity for Fife to fight back in the long run. Going to have to cut his losses now as Gidman once again makes the pass. 63 laps in out of 100 and we are going quite quickly in all honesty. Strategy already about a third of the way through. First pit stops of the night are going to set the tone for what is next and with drivers already having about 50 laps under their belt previously, they should understand how the tires age. And I think right now for Galen Gidman, that's what's carrying him through as he looks to fight for four. Fourth. Understanding, of course, the lessons learned from the first run where he was more prevalent on the bottom side in the middle. Now to rip the top once again. He tried it previously. However, it looks like as the lines are slowly but surely wearing in, it's a much more successful effect as he gets up to the top side, rips through, and gets past Jacob Fife. Now going to be far and away ahead of that number 36, about a tenth and a half away, which is good to be clear. Or maybe a chance now to extend it. Further on back, you're going to see Chris Schetzler right now with Ross Cato. And it's going to be Steven Wetton who's going to be there in 18th. Wetton who was involved in that previous incident. So was Nicholas Ward. Going to be trying to keep things going nice and easy after that. When Neil Froelich is seven laps down as a result of the persistent yellows. And same goes for Alan Rawell. Only one retiree on the day. And that's now going to be perhaps in jeopardy. Sean Kalis and John Cars bring out the yellow flag. Cautions out once again. Let's find out exactly what caused it. Now you can see Sean Kalis right there in the mix with the 82. What looks to happen is with Kalis and cars going around, contact from the backside of the 43. And you can see there, John Carr is going to get spun. Kalis is going to end up going still. Alan Rawell barely avoids it. And the caution is out. Kalis is going to get a piece on the front end. Looks like more on the front side for John Cars as he got spun around so fast and if we take a look on board you're going to see exactly how it all went down from within the cockpit and it was a moment's notice until things went sour instant replay one more time this time from within the cockpit of John Cars Just like that, spun over with a little bit of a 180 contact on the front end, and that's where the damage lies right now. 69 laps in, not nice for John Cars as he goes one lap down and finds himself off a of leader's paces. We'll bring you back with your race leaders up in front. Still going to be Ethan Lane at the top of the board. Michael Larry a second. 
and Cody Griffin rounding out the top three. Now with Ethan Lane out in front right now, he's led almost every lap on the day. Only other driver even close was Michael Laria, and Jared Collin got about a lap up in front before all was said and done. Morton is still the only retiree. John Cars is back on the track, one lap down, so it looks like his night is not all said and done. McFerrin is going to be a driver who's still on the lead lap, right around the range of the top 20 or so. Then on back, there's Neil Froelich and Alan Rawell, who are six and seven laps down, respectively. However, they are still on the circuit, and they don't have any signs to of course, disconnect and leave us. So we'll see how that goes for the both of them here as Ethan Lane is going to take this race lead and hope to bring us back for what is now our fourth restart of the day. 72 laps in out of 200. We should be back green at lap number 74, the way things are looking. And Bristol giving us some great racing action all throughout the pack. Dominance up in front so far. And Ethan Lane already looking for what could be his second win of the season in the Dodge number 54. And Mopar Machine up in front again as we are going to go one lap to green this time by. Pace car going to go down and in this time through. We'll be back at lap number 74. Cody Griffin going to line up right behind Michael Lariat course and diagonally so as Ethan Lane is the man who controls the inside line and it's going to be Galen Gidman now running right behind Michael Larry in this row. Cal Cooper, Jacob Fife are row number three. Brian McFerrin is going to be in fourth row with Bobby Terrell and Braxton Deweese ninth. Matt Jonas there in tenth as they come through for timing and scoring. Lane going to lead us back once again. Here goes the number 54. He's been dominant all throughout the night and it's set to lead us again. Green flags out. Lane with the lead. We're back on our way. Ethan Lane going to be able to get that jump two tenths of a second away from Michael Laria. Galen Gidman's now going to be in fourth, fighting with Jacob Fife. Cody Griffin gets away again. Close battle is going to be in the middle of the field here. You'll see Cody Smith, Brian Perry, Chris Schetzler, and Stephen Wetton all together. Eric McFarland right now going to be in 13th as he stays up high. It looks like for Nick, not much else he can do. He's going to be landlocked on the bottom side. Low groove sometimes going to get held up here with so many drivers up top and when you're alone on the high side it's much more difficult than when you got multiple drivers wearing that groove in and giving you the ability to power through up top nice move there from McFarland but it looks like a little bit of contact to send him right back and of course you want to avoid that as much as you can doesn't mean it's not going to happen but of course you try to keep that away from you all night long. In terms of the wall here, Bristol, it'll come up on you fast. Chris Schetzler now going to be up in it. And Stephen Wetton going to back off a bit only to get that run right to the 24 again. Chris Schetzler got to look out for him. 15th, maybe going to drop a little more if troubles persist as Nicholas Warrior now connection problem. And as of now, it looks like he's going to fade back one lap down at the minima. Might be about four or five when he gets back on the race circuit. If he does, of course, choose to return, Michael Larry is going to get the race lead in the middle of this stint once again. And Ethan Lane going to drop back only to send it deep. And it looks like for the number 54, he's going to be once again in the chasing position. All the while, Michael Laria gets away three tenths of a second out. Right on board with Michael Laria and see exactly what he's doing to maintain the race lead.
side. Right now, Michael Lowry going to jump up to the top side, previously running low to gain more time. But now, all of a sudden, it looks like Ethan Lane beginning to run him back down. And it might be an opportunity for Lane to gain that green flag lead, as opposed to banking on strategy. Brian Perry going to be side by side now with Matt Janus. Same goes for Stephen Wetton with Eric McFarlane and Ross Cato in the mix with Nick Tarbuck. Two drivers who I think we expect to see maybe up inside the top 10. Just a little bit too much action going on in the midfield and too few spots in that top 10 to make it in for everyone. Now it's going to be Tarbuck right down low with Wetton. Steven gets the shove, an aerodynamic push, and it's good enough to get him that spot. And that's going to move Wetton up to 14th. Eric McFarland got away, but it's still going to be a big bubble here looking for positions down on the bottom side. There goes Nick Tarbuck with Brian Perry. 16th now. If Nick can get the spot clearly, he'll be firmly within the top 15 when all is said and done. 89 laps in, and we once again see them single file out. Thunhorst going to be driving right now with the 80 of Matthew Thunhorst. Two drivers we see on Monday nights now racing here with the Gen 4s as Ethan Lane beginning to gain on Michael Laria once again. And now Lane going to be within two tenths all over again. Same as it was last run. Michael got through with about 25, 30 laps in. And Ethan Lane once again reeling the number 44 back in to his clutches. Top two drivers in the past two weeks. Definitely the drivers to look out for for the next few coming weeks as well. Lane and Laria could be a battle for the ages here and it's only just shaping up as they're going head to head in Bristol. Cautions out again. Looks like trouble with the front runners. Terrell, Galen Gidman, Braxton Deweese. Yellow flag is out and your front runners from within the top 10. They go around, some of which with major damage. They can look back one more time here and we'll figure out exactly what caused it. Bobby Terrell, among others, who got caught up in this incident. And here's the instant replay. And Kyle Cooper might have been at the forefront. You see Ryan McFerrin as well. We'll see who makes contact first. Galen Gidman going to be in the mix with Jacob Fife. Galen goes out of the bottom side. Going to be clear on Fife. Looks like Cody Griffin gets a wiggle there, escaping John Cars. That's going to send him into Gidman. Then Bobby Terrell and Braxton Nuis make contact. And sliding into the frame, Stephen Wetton looked to as well. However, he gets by Braxton Weiss, not so much. Front end damage for the number 13, and it looks like it's going to be the front bumper hanging by a thread. Bad news there for Weiss, among others. You saw Galen Gidman involved. Looks like Cody Smith catching a piece. Cody Griffin as well. And now Pit Road going to get busy once more. Looks like Kyle Cooper, your overall race leader, as he stays out on the track. Michael Laria and Ethan Lane come in, and once again, and about the 50 lap marker on this stint, 45 laps exactly. We come through, we set ourselves back up, and we'll be going racing out of Pit Road. Pit's gonna get busy once again, so let's figure out which driver gets out first. Could be Laria, could be Lane, and now we're gonna watch as Pit Exit Camera's gonna tell you the entire story. Up at the front of the field, looks like Michael Laria gets the jump over Lane, then gonna be Cody Griffin, Jacob Fife, Brian McFerrin, Don Stevenson, and to round out the top 10, Chris Schetzler and Stephen Wetton. Then Nick Tarbuck in the 11th, just a spot behind. Nicholas Ward is reconnected, by the way. He should be back with us momentarily. Stands, you can see the driver of the number 73, Cooper up in front. Laria going to be second, and Ethan Lane is in third. Cody Griffin, then in fourth, Jacob Fife rounding out the top five.
Kyle Cooper up in front, the only driver who's going to risk it here, and we will see whether or not it's a true strategy call. He's up ahead, has chosen not to go down a pit road, and some confidence here in the equipment he's got. When it comes down to Kyle Cooper, we'll go through his entire lap history from top to bottom. Before the caution came out, he was running quick times, and as it stands, he's a total of 97 laps into the race. We'll see most recently final green flag lap came out to a 15.357 caution was called on lap number 92 he slowed down on that one so he's about I would say eight tenths of a second off his quickest time maybe there's a chance to hold on if he gets a short stint it's a risk but for Kyle Cooper maybe it's going to be a reward that outweighs the risks that we've already seen presented from running with old tire yellow flag going to be dropped again here goes the green flag Kyle Cooper with a jump and the old tires going to take him to the race lead Michael Lario wiggles high into Kyle Cooper, nearly destruction, there goes Ethan Lane down to the bottom side, Lappers almost caused calamity, yellow flag is out regardless, Wetton involved, Froelich there too, wow, and it could have been much worse up in front, it looks like it all comes down and bottles up to the back of the field giving way once again here we go again yellow flag this time by it's going to be Stephen wet involved among others here's our instant replay and we'll show you what just happened again Wet right now, that number 10 machine to be working through on the bottom groove. He's got Cody Smith up top with him, side by side. Looks like Wet gonna get loose. Then hit Brian Perry, come up into Ross Cato, and he nearly gets taken a wild ride for a flip. Hits Rawell, Jim Fife almost gets a piece, and the caution is out again. 100 laps in, out of 200. We have just about made it to our halfway point, and we've got trouble again. Ethan Lane gonna be your overall race leader, and since we got time here's a look at your overall top 10 lane in first michael laria in second cody griffin third and kyle cooper fourth with jacob five fifth don stevenson sixth brian mcfarren seventh chris schetzler in eighth and nick tarbuck then in ninth cody smith of next level racing rounds out the top 10 once again we'd like to thank our premier partner at next level racing for providing high quality sim racing performance products for dedicated sim racers who deserve nothing but the best we'll be right back after this next level racing promotional break and check out nextlevelracing.com after tonight's broadcast you're watching the integrity octane series at the bristol motor speedway exclusively on ftn with coverage provided by our friends at nextlevelracing.com Turning now, 103 laps in, out of 200. Ethan Lane once again has that race lead, got the jump, and this time by it all came down to whether or not he could get through Michael Laria and a lap machine. It was, of course, Kyle Cooper. And we say lap machine, and instead we should say a driver on older tires, but the pace difference was extreme. Cooper ends up wiggling. Michael Laria does as well. They go side by side, knocking into one another, and it could have been much, much worse for the both of these drivers, but luckily they get away, and it, of course, saves us from a lot more trouble when all is said and done. We'll come back this time through after back-to-back -back cautions. It's now Ethan Lane again the leader. Michael Laria going to be second, and Cody Griffin is in third. Jacob by fourth, and Don Stevenson rounding out the top five.
Now it's going to be Ethan Lane getting the jump again. Bottom side has control. Cooper no longer there. And Laria ends up a car length back. Ethan Lane takes the race lead. Ethan Lane gets the jump further on back. You're going to see the number 24 of Chris Schetzler side by side. Nick Tarbuck going to be right there with on. You can also now see Cody Smith and Bobby Terrell. Maybe going to take that number four three wide. Not a chance for Terrell as he goes up top, gets a little bit loose, and pulls through once again. High side going to keep the number 14 in the fight. Cody Smith ends up lying back just a bit more. And with 94 laps remaining, we've still got ample time for these drivers to pull together their strength strategies expecting that pre-stop strategy to still be the one to go with for all drivers and so far two stops have been made if we can stay on this consistent cycle for the next 40 odd laps we might see your final pit stops come and go and that should be it for the rest of the night trevor trago now going to be side by side with matt Jonas, brian perry right behind and perry now going to get a very good look as trevor trago ends up sliding back and going single file Now Trago going to lunge down low again, just doesn't quite have the room. The closest battle in the racing circuit is going to be even further back now. Kyle Cooper and the caution flying just behind him. John Steele and Jim Fife involved. Yellow flag is out with 90 laps to go. Here's an instant replay and you will see what led us to it. Here's the trouble and it's the 63 involved. Maybe a few others catching a piece, but most importantly we see Fife going to go around and a little bit more contact from John Steele. We'll find out who else is involved as we get at it once again. In flight for the number 63, it's going to be John Steele, the number 22, as you're looking at the replay here. And as the caution flies, it looks like it comes down to Fife getting contact from Steele once and just twice immediately after and you see one other driver sliding into the frame as well it looks like it's going to be galen gibbon who gets by and as galen gets through it looks like it could have been john cars number 82 who slid and goes down into pit road jim fife oh so close to making only one instance of contact with john Steele, and for Steele, a very good job of trying to keep off the bumper there the number 63 for the second time but that first contact is all she wrote We've got a caution once again. Ethan Lane leads the way once more. Jim Fife going to be the driver who gets back on the lead lap, it looks like. Neil Froelich is six laps down still. Jared Callen, six down. And Alan Rawell still going to be seven behind. John Carr is going to be in 30th right now, nine laps down. And finally, 23 laps down, it is Nicholas Ward. He's in 31st as it stands. Justin Morton, 32nd and last. So for your front runners, it looks like most of which are still firmly on the lead lap. Lap. rest of the field only about five of which who are going to be off the lead lap are going to be off by a substantial margin ward coming down and into pit road this time by so is jared callen so a few of your lappers are opting to go for an alternate strategy here and since it honestly doesn't quite matter what strategy they go for why not get the tires in go quicker and keep yourself at the exact same position no track spots lost as such, no gains, no losses. They should be as bad as quick as the leaders. Maybe going to get involved and shuffle up the field, make it a bit more exciting. Hopefully, of course, they don't cause any trouble. With 87 laps remaining, we'd hate to see such a phenomenon occur. Cody Smith still the final driver inside the top 10 and he's been there for a while here. He started in 5th, went down to 10th and he's been around this range all night long. Biggest mover as it stands is going to be Chris Schetzler in the number 24 from 27th. Of course, he's gotten through 20 positions to get up exactly into the seventh spot. And not all a bad night for this number 24 team, one that has seen the highs and lows of the track. And now running just outside the top five, not a bad place to be at all. So maybe for Schessler, an opportunity to go for a few more positions this time through. As we're set to head back to the green flag. Lane, Laria, first and second. And they'll get at it once more. 54 down to the bottom and Laria right up. 
up top. Pace car gonna come through, roll down to the bottom side, and we will get back to racing. It's going to be Lane and Laria, the front row, consistently getting us through for a restart again. Green flags out, number 54 takes the lead. And you can see now Ethan Lane getting that jump, a little bit of contact with the wall. Front runners break through, and the battles persist again in the back. You'll see Bobby Terrell up high and Cody Smith down low. And for now, as the grooves continue to get laid in more and more, track temperature, it hasn't changed all too much. Going to come out to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And of course, the air temperature is still going to be 66 here. So as the track has gotten only slightly warmer, maybe a more opportunity for these drivers. 82 laps remaining to continue laying down that rubber, getting the grooves all the way worn in. And for Terrell, he's there in ninth. Ethan Lane going to lead the way as it stands. You can see that 54 leading. Michael Laria going to be second, and Jacob Fife there in third. Your podium still fighting, having a close battle further on back, and you're going to see it. Braxton Deweese trying to make it through. In the top 15, these drivers are now working at one another. There's Sam Nieto in the number two machine, and with 80 laps remaining, maybe Nieto's going to have a shot to make it by a few more drivers. He's already gotten himself multiple podium finishes this season. One of the drivers who benefited big time from the race at Atlanta, where strategy definitely played a huge hand in his success. And as such, Nieto finds himself behind Galen Gidman. And it's going to be the 37 of Trevor Trago, also Kyle Cooper as well. Number 73 machine of Cooper now in the mix as they're all side by side going double file here. Maybe we'll see them stay clean, maybe single file out. A lot of potential circumstances to come out of this one. We've seen a few cautions derive from close racing, but it's a group of veterans here, all of which who have seen at least one season in integrity competition. And now, there goes Jonas right up to top. He's got it there. Just about gets clear of Trevor Drago and that might be good enough to capture the position. Only for Drago to bounce right back. A little bit of quarter panel contact. Shot us in the wall and Kyle Cooper goes down as well. That's going to be the caution flag. Yellow due to go out and it looks like now pacing on the circuit as Kyle Cooper gets involved. Close racing sometimes gives way to just the circumstance and we are now under yellow. It's going to be a total of only 75 laps to go. Kyle Cooper ends up now in the wall. Front end damage. It's going to be big time there. And as such, we are now going to return to the racing with just about 70 laps left. Here's a look at what happened here with Kyle Cooper one more time. We saw it coming into play with the close racing, and it looks like for Cooper, he's going to be the driver who, of course, benefits the least of it all and fades back drastically. Yellow flag is out. We're trying to get the replay right now. As Kyle Cooper is now going to be way, way back. Here's the instant replay as we're going to bring you back manually to the lap it occurred, and you can see it here, number six. 73 Cooper, this is where it all begins. Up top, Galen Gidman right there in the mix, and Matt Jonas hit the wall. That sends Cooper down, and he ends up getting shunted down and low, and as such, he's going to find himself far out of the track position he was in. Currently 26th, yellow flag is out, and Cooper going to lose big time now as he comes through and Makes it in with the rest of the field on pit road. 73 laps to go, and Ethan Lane leads them back in, this time for an early pit stop, about 130 laps in. So we might see one more pit stop on the day as drivers opt to go in this time through as opposed to the next. Back side of pit road is going to be relatively empty. However, the front side, it is filled. Trevor Trago looks to be on the way. Maybe a mistake there on pit road for him. Ethan Lane going to beat out Michael Laria, then Fife. Cody Griffin, Don Stevenson, and Brian McFerrin. Then it's going to be Bobby Terrell with Nick Tarbuck. And as such, still a few drivers on the track were coming in. Four drivers opted to stay out. So 14th in Cody Smith is the final driver on the net top 10. 
Chris Schetzler decides to stay as well. He's been on about a 30-odd lap run. He's going to remain there. Ross Cato, same goes for him. And as such, some drivers are going to be a little bit riskier and figure out exactly what they're going to do from here by going one run longer. The last great Coliseum going to see Ross Cato and Chris Schetzler up in front. Schetzler is the leader and Cato one spot back. Trevor Trago going to come through and he has to go to pit road again. Look to be a mistake. As such, Schetzler going to now find himself as the overall top driver. Trago with that pit road error going to come in for a second time and lose even more time than if he were to go in to begin with and have a much slower stop. So double stop for the 37. Lane and Larry are up in front of those who have new tires and those who stay out. Schetzler and Ross Cato alone. Double file this time by two drivers going to opt to stay out here on the track and see how it goes. Old rubber, we saw it before with Kyle Cooper, it got a little bit hectic and it's going to be 69 laps to go. A very nice opportunity for Chris Schessler to keep the lead, however with 30 lap old tires it's going to be tricky and maybe going to be a little too, too much to handle as we're set to go at it once again. Pace car down and in, 70 laps to go, make it 69 left. Schetzler gets the jump, Ross Cato not so much, and Jacob Fife now going to move in the next second as Ross Cato gets absolutely no run out of the first two turns. At the line here, it's going to be Jacob Fife running bottom side with Ross Cato. And as it stands, it looks like Cato holding up well in the fourth spot. Chris Schetzler going to be there in second. However, Cato going to really set back Michael Larry as the caution's out again. Trouble for Jim Fife, Alan Rawwell, John Steele nearly catches a piece. And we are once again under caution here in Bristol. Instant replay going to show you what just happened as we're going to back it up a minute and figure out the cause. It's the number 63 of Jim Fife among many involved and as we look back here everyone getting organized this was before the restart so we'll bring you back to when it actually occurred here is the green flag running to get through to the green and Fife going to be among those in the middle of the pack there's Number 15 of Matt Jonas. Jonas gets run up high just slightly gets through again DeWeese going to be up top Number 13 makes no contact, so we'll see whether or not that's where it starts with Fife or if it was with someone else just ahead of Jim Fife. Yes, Jonas makes contact with John Carr, and then it's going to be Fife and Deweese getting to each other. Fife ends up catching a piece of number 22 of John Steele. In addition, you can see Steele there with Steven Wetton. A little bit of damage there in the number 10. As such, Trevor Drago going to be in 22nd right now as he just barely gets by. Caution is out again. We are pacing with 66 laps to go. Ethan Lane going to have that race lead again. Chris Schetzler, though, does remain in second. And that's the one big surprise here, unlike Kyle Cooper. Not fading back big for Schetzler. And it looks like his alternate strategy might just hold on a little bit better than those we've seen before. Ross Cato didn't get a good run at all coming through the first two corners, but he stayed in fourth ever since. Not a long run. That was only three or four laps under green. However, for Kyle Cooper, he hardly was able to hang for a lap or two. That being said, Chris Schetzler going to be in second, 136 laps in the race so far. He's behind, who has been the dominant man all night long in Ethan Lane. And with 65 laps to go, we'd once again like to thank our friends at NextLevelRacing.com for providing high-quality sim racing performance products. Sim rigs, unlike any other, check out NextLevelRacing.com for more information after tonight's broadcast. And we'll be back after a brief message from our friends at Next Level Racing. You're watching the Integrity Octane Series, brought to you by the support of our premier partner next level racing
63 to go. Make it 62 laps left. Schetzler, Ross, Cato going to be the real wild cards, but it looks like Cato going to of course, close it up. He's nowhere with us up in front. Schetzler, though, continues to go on. And your biggest mover tonight from 27 on up. He wants that one extra position, and he wants to try for it. Green flags out again. Lane gets the jump, and it's now going to be Chris Schetzler running second. Fife going to be able to get a run through. Don Stevenson brings himself with, and the battle for third already begins as Lane gets the run out ahead. It's a sea of drivers out in the front of the field. 61 laps to go, all going side by side, row to row. They're door to door, and it's going to be once again the battles that brew in the middle of the field that seem to be most of excitement. Now, we're talking about the middle of the field as if they're 15th on back, but this is the battle from about 5th to 12th if you're going to include drivers like Cody Smith and Brian Perry in the mix. For Bobby Terrell, he's up on the high side. Low is Michael Laria, Matthew Thunders, Cody Griffin also there as well. Jacob Fife, keep him in your mind and Galen Gidman also there with Matthew Thunders. A lot of drivers to keep in mind in addition to the fact that you can see Chris Schetzler holding on for third. Old tires for Schetzler. He finds himself now holding on in the podium even though he got passed by Don Stevenson for second. Maybe an opportunity to keep on to that final spot inside the top three. As Fife runs fourth, he's about a tenth and a half away. And it's now going to be Cato back on the track. He disconnected. That's why he fell out of the top five. Now the 36 lunges low, tries to take that spot. This will be good for third. Fife gets it. That's going to be another position taken. And you look further back. Galen Gidman with Matthew Funnels. Looks like Funnels on the bottom side trying to get a run. He's still going to be locked up with... Nick Tarbuck right there in front of him. And you can't really do much when you're in the middle of that sandwich here. Three rows of drivers. And you're going to be, of course, held up to the high side of the bottom. Cody Smith going to be really up top here. And now Brian Perry and Cody Griffin are going to be coming at the same time. Side by side. Here they go again. 50. Four laps to go. Cody Griffin now going to be coming up on Cody Smith even quicker. And you can see... Maybe Smith can have a little bit of a harder time hanging on as Galen Gidman to the wall at an even worse degree. Gidman going to fade back even further and even quicker. Brian Perry's up in the wall. And there goes McFerrin. Caution is out. Kyle Cooper going to have a little bit more contact and the yellow flag will fly again. And you can see there Galen Gidman going to light the fuse. Brian Perry ends up in the wall as well. Yellow flag is out. Let's take it back one more time and figure out what exactly led to that wreck. Take a look one more time. The number 62. We're going to see exactly what led up to this. Three wide. Gidman in the wall. Bounces off two drivers and it's ping pongs in there. McFerrin ends up down low. And as such, there you go. Brian Perry going to end up catching a piece. You see number 55 of Randy Fyash alongside Kyle Cooper. Yellow flag out again. Now 51 laps to go. Go once more and you will see Lane 54 is up top. Don Stevenson is in second. Jacob Fife in third. The podium looking quite different from what it did earlier in the race. The reason I think largely is because while Ethan Lane is still your leader and has been for the majority of the day, the man who's in second, no longer Michael Laria. He's in fourth right now, hasn't fallen back big time, but with Ross Cato up in front of the old set of rubber, it really changed the complexion of how it looks up at the head of the field. Maybe for Michael Laria, there's still an opportunity to gain back that time. It's only two positions after all, and there's still 50 laps to go. But always the big question of whether or not now Stevenson and Jacob Fife are more well adapted for the nighttime conditions. The racing conditions have changed ever since practice and are still more or less changing, although not at the same rate. It was daytime skies in practice. Now it's completely lights out all throughout the world, except for Bristol here in the virtual iRacing sphere. It's going to be all the stadium lights that give these drivers the chance to see, and the pavement, of course, getting worn in more and more. Maybe it's going to be Michael Lariat less adapted for such a phenomenon. And right now, Evenson, 
Fife. Those two, of course, they're going to be running second and third. They just got up there. Maybe they have a chance to hold on for the rest of the race. Maybe they've set themselves up rightly for the nighttime condition. They're there, and only now Ethan Lane stands between the both of them and a chance at a 1-2 finish. See whether or not Ethan Lane is someone that can be taken from the top spot. Simply nobody gotten by him so far tonight, and he has been the driver to beat all of the others all throughout in Bristol. Ross Cato going to be waved around the pace car due to, of course, his troubles with internet, so he'll get back on the lead lap, perhaps in the caution or two. He's four laps down as it stands, should be able to get down to about two down when it's all said and done. So gaining time back, Ross Cato, four down, and he might be back with leaders when we're all said and done. Ethan Lane in the number 54 to get out in front and lead us back to the green flag. He's got Don Stevenson right beside him, Jacob Fife in third, and Michael Laria, position number four. Top five now going to be rounded out by Bobby Terrell, another rookie who's having a great night from 21st on up, and currently he's the biggest mover as he finds himself outside the top 20, just within our top five with 47 laps to go. Back all the way, Lane gets the green and pulls back in front. It's going to be Ethan Lane out and ahead, and you'll see there Michael Laria going way up high, Don Stevenson down low, and side by side they'll be, but it looks like now Michael getting up into second. That's the move he needed to make to get back in the spot he'd been running all throughout the night. Big change there, as you'll see Cody Griffin now fighting side by side with Matthew Thunhorst and Nick Tarbuck. Right now, though, it looks like he's been passed by Thunhorst, and Tarbuck's the next challenge. Can he hang on with a number three? Looks like quite easily he'll get clear. Galen Gidman now could be looking at Ryan Farrell. Farrell going to be on the bottom side. Galen Gidman up top. And as we're watching these drivers go at it, Sam Nieto also getting in the mix. And Sam, not the most successful of night for this team. 22nd up to 12 as they pass by Gidman. Again, Galen Gidman in the wall. And nearly trouble. Shetster and Wetton. Does Steven save it? No, he's going to be sent down and in. Does that call for a caution? The question is... No, it's going to be huge. It's a big wreck up and over. Eric McFarland goes for a double barrel roll. Yellow flag is out. How about Eric McFarland? Take a look back one more time as Eric McFarland is going to flip twice in the air. And it's a double barrel roll in Bristol of all tracks. Here's a look one more time. Eric McFarlane going to have the worst wreck of the night by far. We saw a flip at Rockingham. This was even more violent. I'd say about twice as violent, given the number of flips. Here's a look one more time at how it all played out. You see him in the back of the frame end up destroying each other. And this is our instant replay as there's action all around the track. And it begins, the caution begins at least, with Galen Gidman. Once again, it's trouble. And this is exactly what it all comes down to. 63 of Jim Fife up top. Eric McFarland is going to be here in, of course, number 30. And Brian Perry is going to send him so deep in. Then you'll see Matt Jonas. And he gets flipped over. Like a bottle opener hits him. That's not a good angle at all to even show exactly what happened. We're going to have to take another look here and try to figure it out. Coming out of turn four presumably might be the best angle. We'll take a look one more time and find out what caused it. Instant replay one last time here, and we'll move back. First driver's coming across. This is going to be closer to the incident here, so as every driver goes around, we'll watch it. Double flip, that's the reason we're taking it back once more. You see the leaders coming by, and you see Galen Gimman, you see Sam Nieto, and Wetton also there as well, so this is going to be just about the lap before. All the drivers come around. You see them straight there. Going to be an extensive restart replay as we try to figure out what caused the double flip. As the drivers come by once again, there's Lane and all his company. And then there's the second pack coming through. Gidman up in the wall. And it looks like 
There it goes. Jonas, Jim Fife, then Braxton Deweese with Eric McFarland. Up top, Fife goes, and Brian Perry's nose sends Eric McFarland up, and he ends up sideways. Doesn't even get to land back straight. Wetton, Cato, in addition, John Cars, Braxton Deweese, and then there's the 62 of Brian Perry. There is going to be Eric McFarland. There's Jared Callen and Jim Fife. I think about 10 to 12 drivers were involved in that wreck, and I don't think we even counted all of them. Yellow flag, the biggest of the night. And that might be the wake-up call that these drivers were maybe waiting on. As Don Stevenson now finds himself the race leader, Ethan Lane is going to fade back and go down and in. It looks like for Lane, going to be a bit of a different call as he fades back now into E11. He's the first driver on new tires. How about that? That being said, double file, what a caution that was. We'll bring ourselves back with 36 laps to go. Don Stevenson going to be up in front. Jacob Fife second and Bobby Terrell there in third. Here we go again, going to be side by side as we get through for another restart. Hopefully going to avoid the same fate for a driver like Eric McFarland as Stevenson gets the run. Don Stevenson leads for the first time tonight and grabs the race lead. Nobody's going to compare. And as it stands, everyone going to get away, but none quite as well as Don Stevenson. He'll take the race lead. Trevor Trago now going to be side by side. And there's Ethan Lane already starting to make those spots up. Terrell's going to go sliding. Does he get out in time? Nope. It's another big incident. Brian McFerrin up on the wall. You'll see Sam Nieto, Galen Gidman. And it looks like the caution, as soon as we left it, returns to the field. Yellow flag is out, and we will once again have a wreck to look at. Not as extreme, but it's going to be another caution. Here's a look back. And you see Ethan Lane there. I think it actually starts just behind with Brian McFerrin, and you see Ryan Farrell in the mix. If they go side by side, you see Trevor Trago right in front with that fight. Then McFerrin, Ryan Farrell. As they come through, it's a big slowdown. Larry, you're going to get that contact. Bobby Terrell involved, and you see further back. Kalis going to get Randy Fyash, going to get Galen Gidman. And it's a chain reaction again. Unfortunately, we're starting to get to the point where the wrecks are really coming in full swing. Much like it was last season, I'll say that much. So it's not unfamiliar territory, but I don't think the drivers like it at all. 47 to Don Stevenson. He's got it there up in front. Now with the field once again set up, Stevenson has the lead. And if we want to talk about tire strategy, a few differences all throughout the field. Let's get to know some of the different strategies. 40 lap run for Don Stevenson, Jacob Fife, Cody Smith, and Matthew Thunhorst. First through fourth, and so how they're going to run with 40 laps on the rubber. Chris Schetzler and 169 laps in. He's trying something different. He's been on his for only 18 laps as it stands. So Schetzler going to have a bit of a younger set. Tarbuck, Cody Griffin, they're together, 6th and 7th. And Ethan Lane is going to be in 8th right now. He has it with a 7-lap stint. So the youngest of all drivers up in front. There's a few others with younger tire. You'll see John Steele, who's in 15th. Randy Fyash, who's in 16th. And these drivers are in 6 and 3-lap runs, respectively. The youngest of all of those all throughout the field. However, I think for... Comparison's sake, we'll keep in mind the three strategies right now. Schetzler, who's up inside the top five, he's not alone. Trevor Trago and Brian McFerrin, the same idea. 
Ethan Lane, he is going to be the leader of those who are on the 8 lap strategy call and then you have the 41 lap call with your front runners inside the top 5, 4 of which are staying out in the older rubber and there's a chance they go all the way, maybe a chance they have one more pit stop left, that all depends on the cautions here, I think that's what it's all really going to come down to. 31 laps to go. We are going to have 30 laps remaining now. It will be 29 coming through this time by. Stevenson and Fife up in front looking for their first wins of the season. Jacob Fife had three last season. Don Stevenson got one win in last season's campaign. However, only got it done of the Charlotte Roval. So no oval victories in his Octane Series career. Maybe a chance to break through tonight. It's going to be Stevenson once again with a nice jump. Cody Smith and it's another pileup. Three drivers go into each other. Yellow flags out again. And it's going to be an accordion stack up. Caution is out. Let's take a look back one more time. And just when you thought we got calm, it's all going to strike back as the field once again ends up in a frenzy. And as quickly as they got through, they ended up stacking up. It's just going to be a miscommunication, a misshift or such. And it's going to take out Schetzler. Not a lot of damage, but you can see they're definitely going to lose that track position, which is so crucial. And that's going to be such a big deal that we once again, 174 laps in, are pacing 27 laps to go. Stevenson and Fife. Sure right now, as they find themselves in that front row, maybe an opportunity to break out again, but... Even the front runners don't seem to be safe any longer. The caution is out once more. We will now have about 24 laps to go when we go back green. That's the estimate here. We are really in the final stretch. And if we go more, any longer than five minutes under green, we will get to the end of this race. However, all a matter of time now. And we're seeing more and more laps go the way of the yellow flag. Cato will actually be back on the lead lap this time by, I believe. And that he is. Ross Cato in 21st is back with the leaders on the same strategy. Despite getting himself involved with the incidents prior, he's back here. And maybe has a chance to go for a top 15 or top 10 if everything were to go his way. So now, Don Stevenson and Jacob Pfeiffer ahead with 26 to go. Ethan Lane has made it up to fifth. And I think right now for Lane, it's not a matter of if he's going to get back up there. It's a matter of when. Maybe there's not enough time with all the cautions coming down to the very end of it. Maybe it's going to come down to drivers blocking him. Could be some lap traffic. We do have a lot of lap machines. However, many of which are on pit road as we speak. So I think right now it's going to be the question of how quickly can Ethan Lane cut through certainly has the opportunity to do so that being said it's going to be all about the number 47 of stevenson and the 36 of jacob fife the one two combo up in the front of the field looking to go at it again looks like the caution going to be just a little bit longer we'll come back at the end of the 24 lap to go mark and come through with 23 laps remaining Donald's going to be there with Nick Tarbuck, Ethan Lane going to be with Brian McFerrin, Cooper, Michael Laria side by side, and Galen Gidman is going to be right now side by side with no driver, and we'll see if anyone pulls back up there. Uh, you look at the high side, it looks like nobody else. Everyone else looks to have gone down to pit road that time by. 25 to go, make it 24. It's going to be Stevenson who's up in front. Looking to do it once again as a race leader. He's now had a chance to control the past 25 laps. Now we're going to figure out whether or not he can go for 24 more and come around with the checkered flag in hand.
Time to get back out of this time by 24 laps to go. John Stevenson going to get the jump with Jacob Fife right behind. Here we go again. Green flags out. Stevenson gets it through. And everyone's going to come by clean. And the caution is out once again. And the signal that we're getting the caution is once again on the track trying to figure out why. And Ryan Farrell potentially involved here. Caution's out. We did not see anything. We didn't catch it, at least. Here's another look back. Let's find out. And looking back here, Sam Nieto may be the cause as well. I mean, you see him stalled. Something's clearly wrong, and that's just a track hazard. If that's the reason for the yellow, which I think it might have just been, then we have a little bit of a trouble there with the number two as Nieto ends up in the wall and stuffed. Bad news there for the Miller Light Machine. And the caution comes out for the oddest of circumstances. We are once again pacing. With that being said, 22 laps to go. Usually we crank it up with our friends at trackcams22.com. Got a little bit of time to tell you a little bit more about our friends at Track Cams for Gormits. The highest quality eye racing camera product on the market with over 100 car and track combinations to suit your eye racing needs. If you're a broadcaster, a sim racing photographer, or perhaps you want to use them for your replays to check out your awesome racing highlights, trackcams22.com is the place to go with oval packs, dirt packs, road packs, and anything in between. You can check out all of their different levels of passes and subscriptions at trackcams22.com or facebook.com forward slash trackcams. We'll return with about 20 laps to go, maybe 19 when all is gotten back under grips. And we're going to crank it up immediately after and highlight some of the fantastic cameras we've been provided by our team at trackcams22.com. A great organization providing us with some of the best cameras in the iRacing market. Onboard cameras and of course the track shot you see a lot of that stuff comes entirely from track cams with a little bit of FTN flair but overall they've done it quite a lot of work in providing us with the best cameras we can provide for each and every broadcast once again want to say hi to the chat room and all those who are active your favorite driver still in it and so far I think a lot of which might not be in the race leading mix be sure to let us know here we still have 21 laps to go it's not all said and done side by side you're going to see him through two laps still the green Sam Nieto going to disconnect and still Stevenson the leader haven't seen many drivers go down a pit road in the past few laps Ethan Lane up to fourth he's still fighting and might have a chance to get up inside the podium Time to get at it this time through with 19 laps to go. We'll be going back green with 18 laps left. So just a little bit of a correction there as we are in the home stretch, 182 laps in, and we're going to crank it up this time by iRacing official pace car going to drop down and in at a turn four, and it's going to be Don Stevenson up and ahead, Jacob Fife in second, Matthew Thunors is in third, and Ethan Lane in position number four. Here we go this time through. It's going to be the pace car dropping through with Stevenson in full control. 18 laps to go. Let's crank it up this time by courtesy of our partners at TrackCams22.com.
The caution is out with 13 laps to go. We are once again pacing. Let's figure out what happened here as the caution flies again. It looks like trouble in the back of the field, of course, but let's find out who in particular gave way. Jim Fife can have a lot of damage here. Sean Kayla still with a bit on the front end. And it looks like Steven Wenton a little bit more than previous. So let's take a look back and figure out what indeed is the cause of this wreck. 13 laps to go, and we are once again under pacing. And here's a look back at what caused it. there Sean Kalis with Cody Smith and it looks like contact there that's going to send Kalis around back end damage going to be big there and he gets all smashed up caution out again we are once again pacing and here you go 12 laps remain here and as such we are once again going to have an opportunity to regroup and figure out who's got what it takes Matthew Thunhorst is up in a second Thunhorst got home last night with his first Ignite Series win of the season He'd been waiting for half a year to get to that point, and now he finds himself just a few tenths away from maybe going back to back. 12 laps to go this time, by. We have such a small amount of laps that we want to get our final promotional break in right now and give you all the rest of this racing uninterrupted. So we're once again going to thank Next Le Racing for their continued support live on FTN, and we'll bring you back with 10 laps to go and a restart on the way. We're in the home stretch here in Bristol, and we will return after the following message, courtesy of our friends at NextLevelRacing.com. It's going to be an eight-lap dash when we go back green. With that being said, any other caution will take us into overtime territory here in Bristol. So watch out. We might see a few more drivers. Of course, maybe play a little bit safer. Might see an overtime finish. It's going to be a big difference in attitude with this final run. Matthew Thunor is going to opt to go down low. He's looking for two consecutive wins and two consecutive nights. Ethan Lane looking for redemption here on a much different strategy. He has 29 laps now. 30 on his rubber is half of which compared to the drivers ahead of him. Jacob Fife is still there. Maybe a chance to slice by Stevenson or Thunorst. Maybe stay ahead of Ethan Lane as well. And Michael Laria, who was the Mr. Second Place of the day today. Of course, maybe the opportunity to take that bridesmaid position back because right now, even that's been taken away from him. And it looks like it's going to be all coming down to the mercy of the field tonight. We've seen so many incidents outside of the top 10 that have changed the complexion of this race entirely. Here we go. This time through, Thunhorst and Don Stevenson up top. The 47 high, the 80 right down low. Green flag is out. Eight laps remaining, and Stevenson gets the jump. Ethan Lane going to lunge down to the bottom side. There he goes. It's the 54, making it down low. That's for third. Now looking for second. Seven laps remain, and Don Stevenson finds himself up ahead, but now only just as Matthew Thunors collects himself so nicely that he now finds himself within a quarter of a second. It could be enough to stay within touch until that final lap. And the white flag, no holds barred for these drivers. You might see a little more aggression than we've already seen all night long. Ethan Lane getting a bit closer now to Matthew Thunos right on board with the 54, and you'll see he's in the picture. Five laps to go. This time by, it's the number 47 of Stevenson working up to the high side again. He's got the defense locked down, and Ethan Lane now going to face that pressure from Thunos. Four laps remain. You can see there the number 50. Before Dodge Machine stays bottom side, Thunhorst right up top, and they're going to go at it all over. Jacob Fife still just behind Thunhorst, but hasn't been able to make a move. Three laps to go, and it's going to be Don Stevenson. Hot pursuit, both drivers behind him. They are still on it. 
and it's not going to be about giving up now. They stay close and at the line, two laps to go. Can Stevenson hold on? That's the big question here. He finds himself ahead coming out of turn two. Now Thunderous with the run. Ethan Lane there too. Lane sends it deep. So does Michael Laria. One lap to go. Ethan Lane now going to work down to the bottom side. He's got Don Stevenson right up top and now Lane is going to be ahead. Can Stevenson send it high and barrel it right up top? That's the big question. Lane down low and Stevenson nowhere to be seen. Last lap pass. Ethan Lane will win in Bristol. Led the most laps on the day. Had to send it deep with two remaining. And in the white flag with half a lap to go, Ethan Lane reclaims the victory and collects the checkered flag. Stevenson coming right there with them, congratulating him. The 54, a winner when all is said and done. And there's Nick Tarbuck as well. How about that win for Lane? It might not have been dominant in the second half, but the strategy worked, and he had just enough grip in the tire to make it all play out exactly how he needed it to. And Lane going to take it to the start finish line, concluding his celebration. Let's take a look at the race result in an action packed race from the last great Coliseum. Ethan Lane will win from Don Stevenson, 98 thousandths of a second. That's the gap when all is said and done. Then from there, you're going to see third place is Matthew Thunos, and fourth is Jacob Fife. Fifth is going to be Nick Tarbuck, and it's going to be Michael Laria, who's in sixth. It's Cody Smith, seventh, and Cody Griffin in eighth. Then ninth, Bobby Terrell and Ross. Cato, position number 10. 11th is then going to be Chris Schetzler with Gallen Gibman in 12th, and it's going to be then Brian McFerrin, 14th, with Randy Fyash, 15th, and 16th, Cal Cooper. Stephen Wetton is going to be 17th with Sean Kalis, 18th, and it'll be 19th, six seconds behind, and Trevor Drago, John Steele. Rounds out the top 20. It'll be Jim Fife, 21st, two laps down. And the retirees go as follows here with Neil Froelich, 22nd, Eric McFarland, 23rd, Alan Rawell, 24th, and Jared Callen in 25th. The 26th spot is going to be John Cars, and then from there, 27th, it's Ryan Farrell. Sam Nieto is going to be in 28th, and Matt Jonas is 29th with Brian Perry, 30th. Ben Nicholas Ward, 31st, and Justin Morton rounding out the field tonight. How about that pass for the win? All came down to one mile. Those last two laps made all the difference, and tonight, Ethan Lane returns to victory lane. Not dominant in the final 100 laps. Strategy different from all the leaders, but that difference, I think that's the reason you got back up there and you collect the win. Ethan Lane, second win in the campaign, and you're back in action here. How about that checkered flag performance? Yeah, that was uh, that was interesting all night. Wasn't expecting it to be like that. Um, I, I knew we were quick on long runs. Um, I think Michael was a little better on the shorter runs. Uh, we just didn't get those long runs to show our true like strength. Um, but yeah, that was definitely an interesting race for sure from Green to Checkered. Saw quite a few yellow flags littering the back half of it. Front half was not as intense, but we saw a strategy for the first 150 laps, mostly looking like a two, three stop strategy. And then the wheels fell off and it seemed like just about everyone was getting involved in incidents there. And a lot of pace laps might have kept you up there, keeping you slowly but surely charging through, but you were losing time. I got to ask, how was it there understanding it was a race against the clock above all else? Uh, it was stressful. Uh, once Don took the outside on that last restart there, I thought it was over for sure. Um, it, it's just really hard to pass on the short runs when people are ripping the fence. Uh, you just got to keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. Hopefully they make a mistake. Um, and we, we just we found the right momentum uh, through those last two laps. We were able to roll the middle really well, and then um, we, we just we, we got lucky for sure uh, coming through the field those last 40 laps. 
taking it through when it matters the most in the final lap pass. Really the one that lit everyone on fire at that very final moment. 98 thousandths of a second. And at Bristol, that's even shorter than anywhere else. Now, we got one more race before we head on to our break, and that's going to be at Chicagoland. So back to the intermediates. We've seen you quick there before. And already two wins in a abbreviated campaign, bringing yourself back on. Of course, already maybe talks of looking for three, but it's by no means been easy for you, of course, with the competition. I think there's an opportunity to go for another successful result. I think so. Uh, Chicago is definitely... Another one of my favorite race tracks used to not be when I first started on the sim, um, but over the years it's become more and more of one of my favorites. Uh, with how dynamic track is and everything, I think you'll be able to see anyone run from the bottom to the very fence, and uh, it's better to see ups up on the fence for most of the race. And hoping to see a little bit more with the number 54. Dazzles with the last lap moment to remember here in Bristol. Ethan Lane, the checkered flag is yours tonight. Is there anyone else you'd like to shout out? I uh, just want to keep thanking you again, David, for putting on these broadcasts. It's fun to go back and watch them. Uh, whether we win or not, um, they're always enjoyable. Uh, thanks to everyone who puts on the league and everything. Uh, it's always a nice... nice breather once you come home from work and you're not really worried about anything, just having fun. Well, Ethan Lane collecting the checkered flag here in an action-packed race in Tennessee. We thank you for your time. Thank you. Ethan Lane going to be on the way with Don Stevenson so close, and it's about the best we've ever seen him at an oval track in this series. Just one lap made all the difference tonight. Stevenson, second on the day. How about that last stint? And of course, you got up there and you made some big gains to stay inside the podium. Eighth to second overall. So moving up, how's it feeling? Uh, honestly, a little, little disappointed tonight. Uh, I had a my my pedals have been acting up pretty much the whole season, and most of the time it's just been with the throttle. Like when you let off the throttle, the throttle being engaged, like you know, like five percent. Tonight, the brake pedal started doing that. And if you know anything about racing with these cars, it's, if your brake pedal is engaged while you're full throttle, it, you're not going to be going full speed. And unfortunately, that that happened uh, quite a few times. Like, I would have to try to tap the brakes in the center of the turn as I was getting back in the throttle to disengage it. And sometimes it would work, but last couple of laps, it wasn't working. And think that was kind of what allowed them, uh, Thunhurst and uh, Ethan, to get right back to me there on that, uh, you know, one or two to go there. And, and from that point, you know, I mean, Ethan was really strong the whole night. And with him having fresher tires, not 100% sure if I could have held them off anyway. But the brake pedal malfunctioning for me was was definitely not helping matters at all. Despite those troubles you mentioned, of course, with the hardware, you were still able to make those gains in the final stint, of course, getting the race lead, pulling away from Jacob Fife, and restarts you seem to have a pretty good control of, even, of course, what happened there on the last lap. So was there anything in particular that kept you up there on that final run besides maybe the restarts? Track position being such a big deal, I'm sure that was most likely the biggest factor. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty good on the restarts, and but... Honestly, the biggest thing that kept me up there as long as we did was all the quick cautions and the amount of cautions we had from when Ethan and a bunch of the other guys pitted there. I think it was around with like 40 to go. And, you know, we had we only had like 30 laps on the tires and like over half of them were run under caution. So I just I, you know, the bet was kind of made at that point and, you know. If you told me with 40 to go that I was going to end up finishing second, I would be pretty satisfied, pretty happy with that because I was thinking this could really backfire. But, you know, being that close to victory, you know, it, it stings just a little bit. Well, being oh so close to victory lane, we know this team has speed already. And one final chance to show that before our first break of the season. It's going to be Chicagoland, another intermediate. And we've seen you fast with the intermediates previously. Still looking for what could be a first oval win in the Octane Series for this team. Maybe a chance to break out and go one spot higher? I mean, you never know. We'll see. I mean, the thing is, there's, there's so many really fast guys in this league. You know, Ethan, 
Lariah, Thunhurst. I, I, I mean, Sam, I mean, I'm and Terabug. I'm, I'm, and I'm probably missing at least five or six or five or 10 others that could easily win any other week, you know? So, I mean, you know, goal stays the same, you know, just try to, you know, rack up, you know, good solid finishes and rack up as many points as we can. And, you know, was able to lead some laps tonight and, you know, get some good stage points, you know, was one spot away from locking ourselves into that. But I mean, you know, Chicago should be a lot of fun next week. You know, it's a, it's a great track that I wish NASCAR went, went, still went to in real life. I've never figured out why they don't go there anymore, but you know, I guess that's not our decision. With that being said, there's a chance to return to the virtual world of Chicago land. And we'd hope of course, to see this number 47 team right back with us. If there's anyone else you'd like to shout out, Don Stevenson, make sure to let us know. Yeah. My, my wonderful wife, as always, you know, lets me race every week. I mean, she, you know, very fortunate in that aspect where I'm able to get on here and race whenever I want and everything. Um, you know, the integrity racing guys here, you know, I said it last night, but you know, Jacob, Cody, Jay, uh, Tom, Chris, you know, Boomer, Calvin, all the guys there that do, they do a great job, you know, running the league and or running both series as they ignite in the octane series and have fun racing in both of them. And thank all the members for always content coming out. Um, Guess, again, Text Level Racing and uh, Pro Powder and Paint for sponsoring us this year. And and you there in the booth, you know, doing a great job as always. Yeah, I can't wait to go back and rewatch the broadcast. Can't wait, of course, to have the next one. Don Stevenson, second place on the day with a thrilling finish in Bristol. We thank you for your time. Thank you. Don Stevenson on the way. Matthew Thunhorse is a driver we didn't really talk about all throughout the race. Top 10 start, top 5 finish inside the podium as a matter of fact. And we thought for a moment there, maybe a chance to go and sweep the week. Two tenths away when all was said and done. Matthew Thunhorse, how about the race we saw here in Bristol? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that about just the biggest crock of gun you ever seen? <laughs> You know, at least on my drive, and you know, to, to cause the first caution, I pancaked the wall, I had two minutes of damage, crew did a good job getting it fixed up, and then I, like you said, I basically was about jacking Don's tires off the ground, almost getting the wind there, so, yeah, I don't know, like, I, I, we've said it the past couple of weeks, I've got the devil's own luck with me there right now, and honestly, if that's what's keeping me in it, I don't want to let it go at this point. I would have to ask, of course, you had pace from the beginning, starting in ninth, so no question you had the speed, at least for a one-lap run, but for the long runs, you were a bit more quiet until about the final 50, when, of course, the aggression got to kick up in high gear, and the race 100% changed. So what was it like trying to figure out how to approach those last laps, knowing each and every lap was a little bit riskier than last, especially until the very end? Yeah, it was weird because early on I was kind of able to make moves even with, you know, because I was trying to take out chunks of my damage and get it, the car a little bit fixed up. And there at the end, I still had some damage on it. And I was just like, you know, hey, we're top 10 now because um, about halfway or so is kind of when I made that call and just stop fixing damage and go for it. And it was weird because, uh, you know, I, I was more wanting to get down to the bottom, save the right front on it and. It kind of just wasn't working out that way, so I was like, okay, get to the top, see what we can get, and I just um, was kind of able to put my restart skills on display there, and I mean, I got really fortunate with, you know, guys that were getting bad restarts weren't in my lane, it's like, oh, that's an easy two, three spots right there, so, um, and then once we got to that final 50, it was just like, okay, lane pitted, Laura pitted, okay, hmm. And I was talking to Cody Griffin. I was like, well, if we're going to pit, if we get a caution around 175, 180, we'll go in. But then it was just caution, caution, caution. And it's, and then people were like, well, why aren't tires making an appearance? Like, uh, uh, if you look behind us, I think most of the people that got tires are now currently uh, disposed of in the pits. So, and we just got that kind of final lap or, you know, maybe 10, 15 laps run to the end. And that was just uh, put everything you had on the dash. And I was trying to make adjustments and I, yeah, I had a shot there with Don. He just covered things well enough, and, you know, then Ethan was able to jump on things. At that point, just hang on for third, which I had no business being in the top half of this field after what I did tonight. So, you know, just just fortunate. 
With all being said, for the number 80 team, it's been so much of these podiums consistently, no matter where we go and no matter what's happened. Chicagoland, anything can happen at that track, but at the same time, it's back to almost the normal with intermediates. A lot of good runs as of recent, we're not to say, of course, luck is entirely the factor, but of course, what's it going to take to perform at Chicagoland when it counts? Well, I was able to find some things out this week, did a little bit of practice and was able to improve my driving a little bit. And that really helped me here. That helped me a lot um, yesterday in Kentucky. And I mean, there's still gains to be made, but I mean, I'm feeling a lot better, you know, and but, you know, Chicagoland, it's I always struggle at a track like Vegas or something on intermediates. They're probably my weakest thing where short tracks are one of my stronger aspects, aside from Bristol, just how high the loads are. Um, but Chicagoland, there's a little bit more break in there. You can yell it out. Hopefully the setups, um, you know, drive it more with the throttle a little bit when not pretty much no break. That's always where I struggle. So um, go there, hopefully have a good run. Just try to stay top 10 and not literally just, you know, try to, to junk my car on like lap 10 or whatever it was and just continue to drive within my means and just not make silly mistakes like that. So uh, we do that. Hopefully uh, just, you know, Keep doing what I'm doing, hang out top 10 all race, and if there's an opportunity, try to go for a top 5 podium, or heaven forbid, if uh, my pot of endless luck continues, uh, maybe go get a W there that way. Still a chance, of course, to go two spots higher next week. Matthew Thunhorst, another podium on the board tonight. If you have any final thoughts, make sure to let us know. Yeah, just kind of as always, you know, just thanks to, you know, everybody at the Octane side, and um, you know, all the drivers and, uh, you know, sponsors and league admins that help put this on. I know this is a rough race. At least uh, we kind of put on a show there at the end to keep the fans kind of engaged. So a um, little bit of a rough night, but it probably should be a lot cleaner next week. And, you know, um, just yourself, David, for always putting on a good broadcast and everybody else at Fireball Talks for all the work they do as well. And uh, just all the fans for tuning in. If they hung in for the uh, end of this uh, little bit of a rough race, uh, they were in for quite the treat. So... Just glad to be a part of it and glad to get a good finish to end it off. So I uh, guess see you all next week at uh, Motegi and uh, Chicagoland. <laughs> Which, uh, uh, two totally different tracks. Oh, yippee. <laughs> and we already await the chance to see the double once again for this number 80 team. Not a bad week at all. Average finish of second for the 80 crew. It's the lower of those of which still a podium tonight. Matthew Thunors, we thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you, David. Matthew Thunor still on the move. That's going to be the number 80 who comes out with a third place finish. It's Don Stevenson second and Ethan Lane. To round out your top three, those are your podium drivers, and we got to speak with every one of which. So with that being said, tonight's broadcast has come to a close. We'll be back with a double header on Thursday night. It's going to be not one but two races, the Iora Cup Series, as they are going to keep their schedule moving, and they've had a fantastic opening run to the season, and the Highline Racing League as well. The Highline Racing League having their first road course race in over a season. Well, that's going to be one to watch, and I'd keep an eye out for that one. Some integrity drivers, such as Ryan Potter, and of course, in addition, DJ Stagner, both of which are going to make their move on to Thursday Night Tour, so we'd love to have you there as well. This has been a presentation of the Integrity Octane Series live on FTN and the virtual Bristol Motor Speedway has played host to all of tonight's racing. We thank you for watching our action from the last great Coliseum and hope you join us next week, Monday night for the Ignite Series and Tuesday night for the Integrity Octane Series. Once again, I've been David Kreutz, commentator and producer for tonight's production. If you enjoyed the broadcast, make sure to leave a like on the stream and subscribe to the channel. Your support is always immensely appreciated. We'll be back on Thursday night. We thank you for your time and hope you have a fantastic night. Thank you for watching live on FTN.